Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Lessons from the Ridge. Hope everyone's doing well this morning. It has been a long time, huh? Come on in. Got Auntie Ann in the house. Thanks for coming in here, Auntie Ann. I appreciate you very much. K62 is here. Hello, K. Linda Wall, my good friend, Linda Wall. Hope you're doing well this morning. Thanks for coming in. Loud and clear, says Auntie Anna. I got to have that before I can start a broadcast. Thank you, Auntie Anna. I need that. Guys, you know it's spring? It's spring. I did not know that. Um, did not know that at all. I um been sick for the past week, pretty much. Just now recovering. Pretty much yesterday was my first day of really not feeling terrible. And uh, I didn't even know spring got here. Good morning, Irene Turner. How you doing, girl? Appreciate the look at all these people coming in here. I just these are the people I like right here. You guys make me happy. You make me happy. So happy. Gwen Taylor, good morning. D Stanley, hello, hello. Welcome to Lessons from the Rich. Thank you very much. Jeannie Lipsky's in here. Good morning, Jeannie. Hope you're doing well. Uh, the backyard homesteader. Happy, happy, happy Sunday. Thanks for coming in. It is a chilly one here in West Tennessee. I got the, got the little sweater on here, my pullover. It was frosty in the Ridge Crib this morning. I'm talking frosty. Now, with the fever I had last week, frosty felt good because uh, that fever was tearing me up last week. I um, was laying on the couch over there and just sweating to death to look down and see what the temperature was, and it was 55 degrees in here, and I thought it was hot. I was like, oh, something ain't right. Something ain't right. <laughs> um, hope everyone is doing well. Is everyone ready for spring? Are, are, are y'all ready? Because it's coming with it's It's here. It, 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 it's full blast. I mean, that pollen's dropping down. The trees are blooming. Flowers are starting to come out. Bees are a-buzzing. We are expecting a hard freeze tomorrow night in northeast Oklahoma. No way. Yeah, yeah, I remember, um, I've seen it snow in March, I sure have I've seen it snow in March, Auntie Anne's so ready for the spring-like weather to get here, me too, me too, well guys, today we're going to talk about pain, it's kind of fitting that I talk about pain when I just went through a week's worth of being sick, and that's painful, and then I'm Laid up for the last month with a knee injury. And this knee injury is is uh, probably one of the most severe. It is the most severe injury I've ever had. It's not healing. I mean, I can't, I, I can, you know, walk. Obviously, I can get around, but it's not healing. Uh, I can't squat. I can't, uh, I can't go down. On, I can't sit, you know, I can't get on my knees. I can't uh, uh, climb stairs. You know, I have to go one foot one foot, it, it, it's just the oddest thing, um, how it's not healing at all. I have no stability and there's still huge amounts of pain, huge amounts of pain. Anybody living with that? Anybody living with huge amounts of pain in their life? Could it be, uh, you know, pain of the body, pain of the heart? Someone's breaking your heart, not treating you right. Um, deceiving you making you feel one thing and doing you know others or painting your soul painting your spirit for being not close enough to god that's pain all those are pain they truly are k62's got some back pain and Anne's living with lots of pain yeah auntie ann she uh, her and i've been talking about that D. Stanley says this weather always happens around Easter. It does. And it's almost Easter, guys. Good Friday is coming up. Are you ready for Good Friday? Are you ready for Sunday? Ooh. Mm. Well, yeah, today we're going to talk about pain. We're going to try and the, we're going to try to find the purpose in pain. And there's no better person to, to look towards. As far as pain, 
as a human like us. Now, if we want to look at pain, what Jesus suffered, that's a whole other story. Jesus suffered pain unmeasurable. But he was no ordinary man. Yes, he was human in flesh. He felt the pain. But he had a higher purpose. A much, much higher purpose. Now, as far as humans go, the person we're going to look at today is Paul. The Apostle Paul suffered through immense pain. Pain of the body. Pain of the heart. Pain of the spirit at times. But guys, there's purpose in pain. Because as you know, who has written most books of the Bible? Who do we look towards for Jesus' wisdom? We look to Paul. This person that produced, that lived with pain. I think I think you're I think you're going to get get something from today's lesson. If you're suffering pain at all in any form or fashion, I think you're going to get a little something from today's lesson. I'm I'm not upbeat right now, guys. I'm I'm not feeling well. Things are kind of going down. And uh, you know, Tim's normally an upbeat, go lucky, you know, always got his eyes to the sky, you know. And I I, I am I, I'm I'm very hopeful for the future. Even though I've been off work for the longest I've ever been off work, I'm making half of what I normally make on sick pay. Uh, I get a call, I get a flu or the Rona on top of you know waiting for my surgery that got canceled, postponed. Not even postponed because I don't have a true date for my for my knee surgery. Insurance declined it. Got got corporate working on that. But I'm normally an upbeat person, and I still am. I I know. Two years from now, I'm going to be in a good place. I know a year from now, I'm going to be in a good place. But Tim, how do you, you don't know the future. You don't know what God has in store for you, what life has in store for you. Doesn't matter. I'm going to be in a good place. When I say good place, I'm going to be in a place that God has me. And I'm going to make it the best I can. So if you're always looking for the vacation in life, man, most of life's going to be pretty bad for you because most of life is not a vacation. Vacation is that thing you do once, twice a year, maybe. Life is what you do in between. And if you're living your life just for the vacation, just for the, the weekend trip or the, the time with a friend and not focusing on the important things in life, you're going to always be feeling like God's not on your side and, and nothing ever goes your way and, and uh, woe is me. If you're, the, if you're the kind of person that's always got to be on vacation or planning the next vacation or or trying to escape life, it's not going to be good for you. I promise you. It's not. It's it, it, You're going to be searching that thing that you never find. Only when you can find the vacation in the life you live will the times when you can escape it for a short period be a true vacation. You got to love this life that God has given you. It's the only one you got. And you may not like where the next place takes you if you don't live this one right. Just saying. <sighs> Promise today is not going to be a downer. Well, I can't do that. I can't do that. It was pretty hard on Paul. We know the outcome. We know it's a blessing. And hopefully it's going to be a blessing for you. So it'll be what you make of it. I promise you. 
I promise you. Irene Turner says, my 30-year-old granddaughter just had complete knee surgery, February 29th, pain. And, and Irene, I'm, I'm not making light of it. I'm told knee replacement is the easy surgery because knee replacement, you got all new stuff and they have you up and walking the day you have surgery. Um, repairs where they take tissue and they graft it and, and it has to sit and it has to mend and it stiffens and there's, and they have to, it, I'm not even looking forward to it. I'm not even looking forward to it. And the, and the, the ACL surgery I got coming is where they use the cadaver tissue and they attach it and everything. That's not even the pain, painful one. It's the meniscus. I got a, a ruptured torn meniscus and that's woo, okay. All right. Pain, too much pain. We can't take pain. Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about pain. Today, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 12, guys. 2 Corinthians 12. She had two before this. Wow. And she, she, she knows pain. So she knows pain. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians 12, guys, if you're following along. Again, I thank everybody for being here. How many do we have in the chat today? Let me just see here real quick. Um, first guys, this is the first one we've done in almost a year. We've got 13, 13. Thank you guys. 13 people and 13 thumbs up. I love you. Thank you very, very much. D Stanley lives with the pain. <sighs> Excuse me. So the apostle Paul is the new Testament version of the unsinkable Molly Brown. Y'all remember her? Titanic's most famous survivor? Just like her, Paul simply refused to go down with that ship. Literally. Literally. Three times Paul was shipwrecked. And once he, fit a, once he spent a full day and a night on the open sea. Refused to go down. Other problems along the way? Oh my goodness. Try being stoned, scourged five times. That's when they flail you and rip all your skin off and everything. He was beaten with fists, rods, and words. He'd been chased. He'd been scandalized. He'd been slandered. That hurts the spirit. He'd been the focus of riots, death threats. And guys, after one uh, near-death experience, he was snake bitten. On top of all the stuff man had done, he was bitten by a snake. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Don't you think? His focus, his energy, his resilience, was nearly frightening. In fact, the only thing that seemed to discourage Paul, the only thing that really seemed to bother Paul was the problem in the church. Little churches that he had set up all around Mesopotamia there. That's what, that's what pained him. <laughs> Going through all that, and he's, He's pained about the churches he sets up. To read Paul's letters to the churches, you might, you might come away with the idea that Paul was continually frustrated. That, that really his work wasn't that successful. After all, those early letters were filled with corrections. Some of them quite harsh. He was, he was pretty harsh on them, don't you think? Because you know, the, the New Testament is really a lot of the books. I mean, in a lot of the letters Paul wrote to the church, the church of Laodicea, Philippi, Ephesia, Corinth, 2 Corinthians. Paul wasn't angry with a lot of them. Paul was angry with a lot of them. He sure was. <sighs> But in reality, guys, Paul's work changed the world. 
places like Athens, Ephesus, Corinth, the once powerful temples and the religious centers of Greek gods. They were in ruins. And yet billions have today and are still reading Paul's letters. We're memorizing passages, following the instructions as if Paul was still preaching his passionate passionate message to our culture. Think about that. These are letters Paul wrote to his churches. We read them today, a thousand plus years later. Going on 2000, right? Auntie Anne says, when reading his letters, I get the impression that he felt he was writing to adults acting like children. Pretty much right. Guys, we're not fond of pain, are we? We don't even like discomfort. You know, we we have to uh, we, we 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 buy first class. We get the uh, the limited edition. We get the uh, fine Corinthian leather. We don't like discomfort. I know I don't. I like to be in comfort. Sorry, I'm getting a cough drop here, guys. Guys, we turn from even the suggestion of discomfort. We don't like the sight of it. And we definitely, we definitely don't see it as good for us. But the lessons of life are almost always taught in the classroom of suffering. Are they not? Whether it's you're suffering through an injury like me, dealing with excruciating pain of disease, or the heartbreak of grief. Today we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 12, guys. We're going to be reading uh, 7 through 10, if you're following along. Hope everyone's following along here. I know uh, I'm a little uh, not feeling well and but I'm passionate about this lesson. It's my first lesson in almost a year. It was last May. Matter of fact, the last time I went live on Ridge Life Lessons was down in Mississippi at 3 Mississippi with Sid and Mike. It was probably one of my biggest Ridge Life Lessons. Reached the most people. And here we are today. Back at it, 10 months or, you know, nine, 10 months later, been through so much. I've got 13 of you here wanting to hear this lesson. And I appreciate you so, so much. And for all those that watch this in the replay, that share it, I appreciate you so much. Because I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there today that, that needs this lesson that needs to know why there's purpose in their pain, how there's purpose in their pain. Jamie, who works Littlefield, good morning. There is, I promise you. Let's see, 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, guys. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surprisingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest in me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Jamie says, I just remember when Jesus suffered for me. Amen. 
I'll tell you right now, guys, pain happens. Pain happens. There's a there's a phrase out there in the world. I know probably a lot of you have said it. Can't lie. I think I've said it too. Something happens. It's the first words, uh, you know, not a pretty word. <coughs> well, pain happens. Good morning, Big Wave Florida. So from a logical point of view, it would seem that God would reward those who do good with less pain, right? Preachers have no pain. They don't get sick. You know, teachers, hospital workers, you know, missionaries, they they don't they they get all the money they need, they fall in love, they live happily ever after, they 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 live in a beautiful home, they don't have to pay they don't have to worry about bills. They they never get the flu. They the Rona was something they never ever even you know didn't touch them because they were they're good people. God rewarded them, right? You should get a free pass in pain if you're doing God's work, right? <laughs> Auntie Anne's laughing. That's right. Wouldn't it be a good idea to take care of those who work for you? Missionaries, church planners, pastors, they're working for God. Wouldn't it be a good idea to take care of them? Paul did not get a pass on pain. He was the number one church planner in the world, in the world history of the ever and ever amen. He didn't get a pass. In fact, he set about the world planting churches, becoming the leader of the evangelic, evangelic movement among the Gentiles, you and I. He seems to endure an incredible amount of pain. Guys, his resume of suffering seemed to endure an incredible, incredible amount of pain listed after listed after listed moment in our Bible. If you look at uh, um, 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 29, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. It's real close to the text we're talking about now. It includes imprisonments, beatings, floggings, canings, life-threatening experiences, stoning, shipwrecks, the night and day at sea. He didn't have enough food, clothing, sleep. He didn't have any friends. He'd been chased by bandits. Religious leaders mocked him and, and discouraged him. He battled temptation and anxiety over his young churches. Sound like we should have medicated that boy, huh? Giving him a little Xanax. Everything had been just fine there, buddy. Put you on some antidepressants. You're going to get through this. Just kind of relax and let it go. Let the problem of the world just go by one pill at a time. That's all it takes. Because there's no purpose in your pain Make the pain go away. And then you'll be just fine. A lot of times when we do that, though, we forget what we were working for. Because we feel so much better now. What was I doing? I don't know. I think I'll go on vacation. I feel better. Anime, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you in here. And then, then there was this thorn in his flesh. So how bad was this particular pain? Well, guys, if Paul says anything, it was straight from hell kind of bad. Messenger from Satan, he said, sent to torment him straight out of hell. You know, perhaps... A person going through that, you know, the excruciating pain of cancer treatments could tell us how, ba how bad pain can become. 
or one that's suffering with Lou Gehrig's disease, right? Oof. Arthritis, knees tore up, multiple sclerosis, MS. So many diseases, disabilities, discouragements that can come our way, huh? Tim, you're so down this morning. I promise there's purpose in your pain. Paul asked God to remove his pain. Whatever it might have been, we don't know. He didn't say. Perhaps Paul explained why it would be a good idea to have the pain removed. He could plant more churches, right? He could write more letters. He could win more converts, raise more money, mentor more disciples. He could prove the power of God even more and more with the miracles that were so common in Ephesus. Remember Acts 19, 11 through 12? You know, Paul asked, asked again on three separate occasions, Paul pulled out all the stops to ask God for a miracle of his own. Please, God, please, God, please, God. Pain did not go away, people. Whatever the problem, it apparently stayed with Paul for, for quite some time. Maybe even the rest of his life. I don't know. But Jesus knew pain. Weeping at the tomb of Lazarus over an unrepentful Jerusalem. Remember that? You thought I was going to say on the cross, didn't you? He knew the physical pain of the cross. That's true. And the personal the personal pain of betrayal. Anybody feeling betrayed out there right now? Someone's been leading them along, telling them they're important, telling them that they're, they're all, the, they're, they're, they're the one and the only. And really, you're one of many. He'd seen rejection. He'd seen disappointment. As I'm sure you have as well. Dana Mason, good morning. Hope you're doing well. Hope you and Tim are doing well. Thank you very much. Just got back from Atlanta. Started another treatment tomorrow. Yeah, Tim's, uh, Mason's going through uh, the big C treatments as well. So, kind of talking about that a little bit. The pain. The pain. Oh, the pain. It seems silly, guys, to make the case that pain is a part of life. Life starts with a good slap on your bottom. And in some aspects, you know, goes downhill from there. <laughs> we already know that pain happens. Right? Pain happens. That should be a... Uh, for old people, that's what... Uh, um, uh, AARP ought to make bumper stickers. Pain happens. That's 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 our our generation's bumper sticker, right? Not S happens. It's AARP. Pain happens. Here's a really important question: Will you find the positives in your pain? Paul did, and you can. Perhaps you already have. But just remember, pain happens, but pain has a purpose. Woo, getting into it now. We're 30 minutes into this. Tim's finally getting into it. Y'all know me. <laughs> you just thought this was going to be an hour lesson, didn't you? Some of y'all got church to go to, I know. So whenever you got to go, you just go. Don't worry about me. You can always come back and finish watching it later. What is old? Never feel old till someone tells me, says Jamie. You only feel as old. You only are old as you feel. Is that right? I can't get this to move. One second here, guys. Oops. <coughs> guys, the point of this lesson today is very, very tough. It really is. Tim, you started with the toughest one you could do. 
right? Now there's, there's a couple other hard ones too. But you know me, I don't ever shy away from things. When I come back, I come back hitting hard. There's a fine line here that must not be crossed when we talk about purpose in our pain. Because if we're not careful, we're going to cause more pain to someone who's suffering. You know, we should never just, you know, lightly wash off someone's pain as God's work. It's not wise. It really isn't. It's not even biblical for you to do that. To tell someone that in pain that God won't give them more than they can bear. Oh, oh, Tim, that's biblical. God won't give you more than you can bear. First Corinthians 10, 13. It's clearly, guys, about avoiding temptation, not overcoming pain. And actually, the whole point of that isn't that God won't give you more than you can bear. It's that God won't give you more than you can bear without him or with him. Because with him, you can you can do all things. If you've got God, he, you will never have more than you can bear because you've always got God. But if you don't have God and you're pushing God away and you're focusing on your pain, pain's all you got and you can't handle it. You can't handle the truth. I promise you. But the truth shall set you free. And that's what we're talking about today, guys, is the truth of the pain and the purpose in it. <clears throat> so in the midst of pain that won't leave you, you might be able to discover at least part of the purpose your pain has. It's kind of a, it's kind of a process that it leads to maturity. And it's, it's like no other process. These are lessons that can only be learned they can only be learned guys in the classroom of suffering. And there's only one student enrolled in this class and that's you. You're the one that's got to make this discovery of what this purpose is. I'm not going to tell you what the purpose of your pain is. No book's going to tell you. Pastor's not going to tell you. Well, he'll, he'll probably want to try. He'll help you. I, I promise you. It's, it's his job. Your best friend's going to tell you for sure. Oh, it's that guy. He's your problem. You just need to get rid of him. He's the problem all along. He's why you're sick. <laughs> Sound like some of you friends, huh? You are the one that has to determine through this process what the purpose of your pain is. Now, let's look at that passage we just read. You know, Paul concluded for himself that this thorn was meant to keep him from becoming conceited about his miraculous life and ministry. Oh my goodness, this boy could have got a big head, right? Thank you, Karen. Auntie Ann. This boy could have got a big old head on him, couldn't he? Man, I wrote every book in the Bible, almost all of them. I got more people in the church pews than any uh, than Billy Graham ever thought of. Billy Graham ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> Call me the Paul with a capital P. Guys, since we know so much about this man's work and this man's suffering, I, I'd suggest there's more positive purposes in Paul's pain. God knew what he was doing. And he chose Paul. Paul, the guy who crucified Christians, or persecuted Christians, I should say. That's the one God chose. Chose, 
chose Peter. Peter denied him three times. God's got to pick a people, doesn't he? In Philippi, Paul and Silas were beaten in public and taken away to, down to the dungeon. Y'all remember this? The men were there that day leading, um, leading the, the, the day's leading headline was about them. What this man and this other guy had been saying in public. Take them away. Everyone's talking. They're talking about this Jewish Messiah. You know, the next morning, the headlines. Oh, my goodness. There was this song last night, this earthquake, and a jailer converted to... What happened? You know, the day before, Paul and Silas were... They had to be screaming for God. Oh, please let them let this beating stop. Oh, please, God. Oh, what's why are we why are we doing why are we suffering? Why are we going through this? They hate us here. They're 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 killing us. Throw them in a dungeon. Y'all know what happened that night, right? With the earthquake, the song, and the guard that converted. Guys, the relief, the relief didn't come. But the message of Christ exploded in the city. Oh. And guys, in large part, it was because of the, the unfair suffering they experienced the day before. It's what got people interested in them. It drew people's attention. And then God's miracle worked. In Ephesus, Paul had what, might, had what might be his most successful ministry anywhere. He preached there for more than two years until all who lived in the province of Asia had heard the gospel. That's Acts 19.10. And suddenly, in as little time as it takes to incite a riot, 25,000 people packed the local theater and screamed their disapproval of the message that was threatening the worship of Artemis. Is one of the most important economic engines of the city. So in that riot of 25,000 people, most of the people weren't sure of what the fuss was all about. Again, Acts 19.32. Good morning. What would you do in the hours that followed such an event? Wouldn't you want to know what caused such a, a fury? Though Paul never got to preach, uh, preach to that crowd, you know, as he had wanted to, you can bet thousands of people heard the details of the gospel. Perhaps more hearing in a single day than it heard in the past two years combined of him preaching around the area. But at that moment, Paul only knew the pain of having to leave his home and his ministry in a hurry. He was run out of town. You know, like Paul, most of us can't see the purpose of our pain right now. At first, we just see the pain. If someone you, you love gets orders to deploy overseas, you know the truth of the old saying that absence makes the heart grow fonder. It really does. If you're the one that's forced to leave, the pain of separation will greatly increase the intensity of your training, your preparation, and your work. You know, only the pain of that Pearl Harbor or 9-11 that mobilized an entire nation to take action that it needed to do. We had World War II, right? After Pearl Harbor. We had the war on terror after 
probably the only time in my life that I see in the United States act as one. Only time in my lifetime. And in both those cases, guys, the, the pain of great loss can cl cloud the, the, vi the, the vision of pain's purpose. The same is true for our personal pain. In the midst of the suffering, it's, it's extremely difficult to, to find the purpose in our pain. <clears throat> and it's definitely hard to celebrate that purpose, right? Oh my goodness, who celebrates the purpose of their pain? So unless faith plays a big role, it's probably not going to happen. So in the midst of pain, there's an opportunity for faith maturity. And that faith maturity can accelerate your Christian growth. It can do it like nothing else possible. It takes a, a tremendous amount of faith to pray to God to allow Allow that suffering and say, God, I don't know what the purpose of this pain is, but I trust you have a purpose in it. Deborah McDowell giving us Romans 8, 28. Y'all remember Joseph, right? Woo, Joseph. From Joyce, Joseph's point of view, there was a time in his life when every angle showed nothing but pain. Sold by his brothers, betrayed by an employer's wife, forgotten by his friends in prison, ignored by the God who had once promised him a, a position of leadership and power. And if Joseph had been 16 or 17 when he was captured, how many years of suffering passed away before he understood God's hand in the process? Oh my gosh, Joseph. Well, we could tell that story in a minute or two, but for Joseph, there was this was moving an agonizing, slow, painful. This process was so slow. It probably took 10 to 15 years, guys. We read about Joseph. Boom, Joseph. Wow, good stuff. 10 to 15 years he had to go through that for us to, yeah, Joseph. That's a long time to spend in a waiting room. I get upset with 30 minutes in a waiting room. I can't imagine 15 years. That's a long time to spend in traffic. But guys, as usual, God was very much at work. He was right in the middle of that pain. God was working in the courts of Egypt. God was working in the weather patterns that circled the globe. God was working in his brother's lives. And almost importantly, God was working on Joseph's own heart. He was testing it. He was probing it. He was forming a young man. He was forming a young man who simply would not waver from his faith in God. Even if life took him to the bottom of a dungeon or the height of power and prosperity, that's a man. Sure, we can all love God when we're, we're down and out. But when you get power and prestige and money, all the pretty things in life, do you still follow God? This hardening, this shaping, this sculpturing of the spirit allows us to weather off the temptations of life. But make no mistake about it, as God worked, the waiting was hard for Joseph. It was bitterly, bitterly hard. And guys, there's no guarantees for any of us. Even those, even those called to ministry, pain happens. And guys, for those who, are, who will even dare to search for pain purpose, there's one more thing. Guys, you'll find it if you look. Pain has power. Pain happens, pain has a purpose, and guys, pain has power. There's power in pain. Torturers know it. Let's use it for something a little better. So in this particular passage, Paul receives a special message from the Lord. 
If you've got a red letter Bible, more than likely you've already spotted that the red letter moment, Jesus told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. The message and the messenger gave Paul a tremendous boost. Ah, there's power in it. Woo! Can you imagine if we all walked around and as things happened in our life, we had this little caption above our heads. And when God speaks to us, woo, red letter captions. It'd be so easy. You know, we're driving down the street. Someone cuts us off. Little red letter caption goes, bless his heart. He's late for work. His wife just left him. Let's pray for him. Woo, wouldn't it be good to have red letter words above our heads when we think? I know I need them. According to most scholars, Jesus was crucified around 30 AD. Paul was saved about five years later on that road to Damascus. It was a miraculous salvation experience, complete with a blinding light and thunderous voice of Jesus, sending Paul into three days of repentant fasting. So in just a few weeks, Paul had another supernatural experience in Jerusalem when he saw the Lord speaking. Acts 22, 17. There was just... It was just that Jesus told Paul to take this message to the, the gospel to the Gentiles, which was an instruction that represented a major shift in missions in Paul's life. Before this moment, he wouldn't have shared leftovers with a Gentile, much less a message of hope and love. But 16 years at least before had passed before Paul had another miraculous experience with God. Two, per, two very personal encounters occurred maybe in 16 weeks and not another for 16 years. After that, it would be another six years before the next. And after that, according to Acts, there never was another one for Paul. That was it. So he had two, another, and another. All of what we have from the Bible, from Paul, after four or so encounters with God. Paul had a vision of a man from Macedonia, Acts 16.9. And an angel of the Lord in Acts 27, 23 through 24. And perhaps he had other such encounters, but Luke only tells us of these. I think it's fair to say for the most part that Paul's pain, Jesus didn't show up for it. He suffered all that pain and there's five or six Jesus moments. For all that pain, Jesus didn't show up. Peter, that natural leader of the post-Pentecostal church, he had only two such experiences, according to Luke's history. Stephen also had a miraculous experience from the Lord, but only at the last moment as he prepared to die. None of those New Testament heroes had a personal appearance from the Lord at every beating at every scourging, at every arrest. Nobody did. They must have suffered a great deal in silence from the Lord. And they must have wondered many times why God would allow it. When, call, when Paul kept asking for the thorn to be removed, he got a direct lesson in pain's power from the Lord himself. In other words, Paul decided he was fine with the pain. 
If Christ's power was upon him in the pain, then he would rather have the strength of Christ than its own weakness, than his own weakness. Yeah, take the pill, pain goes away, we go on vacation, we're on our own. We forget our work. We don't continue on as Sunday school teacher. We don't take care of, you know, uh, door-to-door ministries. We, we feel better now. God, God healed us. Let's go to, let's go to Jamaica. Let's have some fun. But Paul said, when I am weak, then I am strong. And that's the power in pain. You're powerless when you're on vacation and you're all enjoying all the me, the me, the me, the me, 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 me. Your Christ power is, you've, you've hidden it. You've buried it deep. And I ain't saying nothing wrong with vacation. I love me some vacation now. But some of us are on permanent vacations. You know, I ain't done a Ridge Life lessons in nine, ten months. Have you ever noticed how people listen to people in pain? With special intensity. You know what? what, We sure like those YouTube channels that uh, are the videos that, oh, this is terrible. I'm suffering. Uh, Worst pain I've ever felt. You know, I'm pretty guilty, right? We're drawn to it. We listen intently. People watch those who are hurting to see what matters most to them. If the pain is great enough, you'll find out where their strength and their spirit really lies. You'll see the character on the inside that inspires all of us. Sometimes, you know, clickbait thumbnails bring people in. It's what you say on the inside once you get them there. You got you to gotta fulfill, guys. You gotta fulfill. It's a prime time witness, guys. When all the eye, when all the eyes of the world are on the person in pain, it's a prime time witness. In the world of sports. It might be a quarterback limping back to the huddle before he's taking his team to the Super Bowl. In the movies, it's Rocky getting up off the mat one more time. Adrian! In real life, it's a wounded soldier coming home, still proud of the uniform and the duty that cost him so much. Wounded warriors, right? And in the New Testament, it's Paul crawling out from underneath a pile of rocks in Lystra dusting himself off and heading to Derby. When we see such passion in the midst of pain, we applaud it. We follow it. We find inspiration in our own lives through the examples of others. There is some pain so great, it seems impossible to bear. In that place, Only God can meet the need. There's no drug that can take it. There's no surgery. There's nothing you can do to remove the pain. It's so severe. Only God can heal the heart, people. Only God can heal the heart. But unfortunately, it's it's in that place of greatest pain, and there alone, that discovery can be made. It's, it's, why can't we just figure it out in the happy days? Happy days. Fonzie, a eh? The power of pain, like nothing else, it can introduce us to the power of God. But the lesson is so difficult. The only way any of us would ever discover it is if, God allows pain to be a part of our lives. God doesn't cause the pain. 
Job didn't, God didn't smite Job. <clears throat> Job just removed his, I mean, God just removed his hand a little bit. And let Satan do his little magic and see what Job did. And Job, Job responded. Job responded. <sighs> Pain happens. Pain has a purpose. <sighs> Pain has power like you would never believe. It can, it can draw you back. I'm here doing lessons on the ridge. Is it because of the pain of my life in the last few months? Well, guys, I've been off work for a month. I had all kinds of reasons why I wasn't doing lessons from the ridge. Those leads, those reasons were removed. Pain has a purpose. Pain has power. We must act. We must act. <laughs> Finish up with a brief illustration. The beauty of a single pearl or a string of the precious stones is unmistakable. Few jewels capture the eye quite like a perfect pearl. I know a lot of you ladies probably have your beautiful pearl necklaces. You've been handed down from generation to generation. I know some of you know, maybe not everybody, how a pearl came to be. A real pearl, not a synthetic pearl. In the beginning, all good stories always start with in the beginning, right? In the beginning, it's a grain of sand. A tiny little irritant slips inside the tight seal of an oyster shell. And immediately it causes discomfort with no way to expel that little grain of sand, with no way to ease the pain. You're an oyster. The oyster coats the sand with a layer of the inner linings of its shell to make that sand smooth. Sand, if you ever looked at a sand, it's got those sharp edges. It's a little cube. It's a little crystal. It's glass very irritating. So it, it coats the outside of that, that sharp shard of sand with a little bit of that essence of pearl all the way around. It starts a little, 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 little thin layer. Oh, it feels so much better. Oh, a little bit. But it, oh, it's still, it's still there. I feel that. Oh, again and again, the oyster coats the sand. But all the attempts to get rid of the irritant have little effect. It's still there. It's still there. Oh, I've coated it. I've 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 taken the you know the Pepto Bismol. Oh, my stomach is oh, it still hurts. It's still there. I've coated it. I've coated it. It's still there. Again and again. Now, as far as the oyster is concerned, what we call a pearl is nothing more than great suffering. Every single pearl you got on your necklace is suffering of the little oyster. Suffering, 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 suffering. But one day, the oyster is finished, is fished from the water, and it's opened. The gem inside has amazing beauty and it holds great value all because that little oyster had suffering think of the great value in you let your suffering have purpose 
It's happening. Let your suffering have purpose. But most importantly, find the power in your suffering. Guys, it's 1030, one hour on the dot. We did it. We did it. I know some of y'all got to get to church. Get your showers on. Get your pretty clothes on. So if y'all need to go, just go. I love y'all so much. Uh, I can't say that I'll be doing this every Sunday, but I uh, uh, I will uh, love to bring these to you. You know, I get more if if my I don't know depending on what my surgery is. You know, if I'm all drugged up and suffering in pain, <laughs> uh, might not be here on that Sunday. But I will keep you guys informed. Okay, uh, we have 20 people in here today. I love all of you for for sticking with me today. This was a rough one for me. You know, kind of. Usually, like I said before, when I did lessons, fingers were always pointing at me. You may have, a lot of people think when they go to church that the the, the fingers are pointing at them, 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 them. Well, it's usually it's, it's the pastor gets the lesson for him as well. Thank you, Auntie Ann. I love you so much. Thank you, Gene. I appreciate you. Irene Turner, thanks for coming in. Mom says thank you. She's pretty sick. Thank you, Lila. We'll tell her she's welcome very much. Karen Herkey, hopefully this helped you in your pain as well. And Auntie Ann and your pain. So many of you in here are suffering from pain. Hopefully it helped just a little bit. Deborah, hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Anna Mae, thanks for coming in today. So guys, don't know what God has in store for me, but uh, I'm going to keep searching and uh, y'all keep encouraging me, please. If you like today's lesson, share it out on your social media. I know it's not the the popular thing on YouTube. It's not the, 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 a lot of people are afraid to talk about these things, but if you, if you enjoyed it, maybe somebody else needs to hear what's the purpose in their pain as well. So share it out on Facebook, you know, whatever, YouTube, what, whatever you got. I'd appreciate it. I'm, I'm sure someone needs to hear this. So love every single one of you. So I will talk to you soon. Uh, my surgery is scheduled for tentatively for April 3rd. Uh, that's after Easter weekend. So who knows what's going on here on the Ridge, but make sure you check back. I sure appreciate every single one of you. Love you all. Until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day and to God be the glory. Haven't said that in a while. Amen.